Okay. Um, I think I, I had this working before and then it broke. So I used this uh, a few times, as you can see my scribblings here. And uh, I'm going to show you this one because this is a, a planned funnel that we did. I don't know. I wish it would tell me the date, actually. This is several months ago. Um, but basically, you can see we were going to run some Facebook ads, have people land on a quiz page and ask them if they own a business. If they own a business, we were going to send them into a funnel where we could potentially sell them ads or um, sell them some business help. If they didn't own a business, they would go down to a t-shirt um, advertisement, basically. And this is kind of where I want to get to um, what I want to show you here. So usually, I like to start with a plan before I do a funnel and any of this stuff. I've, I found it's way easier and we're talking, you know, 10 times easier and faster. And I know as a business owner, um, it's a really big issue for speed. And I know, you know, owning a business and trying to run one, I'm, I'm always trying to do things as fast as I can. And then the business owners I know, that's the same mindset they have. So we all like things really quick. We want them to happen now. And we just want to get it done. Well, it turns out taking some time in front of the actual activity and doing some planning um, is really helpful in this particular instance. I think because partly because it's digital and partly because it's so complex, um, the different nuances of how things connect together. And I'm going to try and draw that out here. Um, I might fail miserably, but we'll give it a shot anyways. Uh, so... I think the best place to start is with Facebook. So we'll give a big F. Um, <laughs> I actually am not that happy with Facebook recently, but that's another story. Um, on your Facebook, you're going to have the pixel. I'll just call it a pix. And that's basically, I think it's like a one pixel gif image cookie and that's probably a terrible explanation um but basically it loads a cookie that tracks people and ties them back to their facebook profile so that facebook can know oh hey you know it turns out that you know let's call it at least someone named betty over here and betty's on her computer keyboard and Betty is interested in QuickBooks and Facebook didn't know that they never thought that they didn't realize that she would be interested because they said well Betty's just a, a secretary and she there's no reason she would ever want QuickBooks well it turns out Betty likes to do her job better and faster so she wants to Learn about QuickBooks. Now, the thing about the Pixel that's cool, or not cool, depending on how you look at it, is this can track across you know, several websites and kind of build a profile for someone so it could find out, oh, Betty likes QuickBooks. She also likes quilting. It's probably a very complicated choice for something to draw. Um... You know, might also find out that she likes cooking. That's supposed to be a bowl of food. And it can kind of build a better profile. So when an advertiser comes to Facebook and says, hey, I want to sell a bunch of quilts that have, you know, cooking on them. Facebook can tie these things together using a system called GraphQL. Um, which is a whole nother discussion. Um, and, you know, say to the advertiser, hey, yes, we've got the perfect person for you. We're going to show Betty 
your ads and she's going to buy from you. And so kind of our goal is to target the people that like QuickBooks or, you know, have some kind of relative interest in it that um, maybe we could tie over to other things. So we might say, you know, is a secretary and likes QuickBooks, but you're doing that is it's essential to have the, the pixel on your website. And I've shown you, you know, maybe she visits a cooking website and a quick a quilting website, but you can do this same profiling internally. And because it's your own website, you get a little more control and you get to see stuff like if she went to the cart page or if she read your sales letter or if she actually maybe like added it to the cart but for some reason abandoned it um, you can build all these little directives that say you know put this person in let's call it a bucket put them in this bucket so we can identify them now uh, click funnels has the same feature it's called actionetics and I'm probably spelling it wrong um, but it looks terrible anyway so no one can tell I spelled it wrong and you can do the same kind of thing so you can set up these action triggers on different pages and put people in the buckets now what's powerful about doing this on um, you know your ClickFunnels account versus Facebook is the emails you can send out because it's like okay she's in the cart bucket we're going to send her email one uh, or she's in the abandonment bucket so we're going to send her email a one um, so on and so forth now the Facebook pixel is important for advertising so you want to get your pixel set up because you're going to retarget Betty on Facebook to come back to your site. Um, so you're going to show her an ad. And then once she sees that ad, you're hoping that she clicks on the QuickBooks University. And then you can start, you know, applying the action edits because there, there's also this other advanced feature to the action edits where if she's been to your site before and last time she abandoned the cart, um, you can, you can do some advanced things there and I'm not suggesting this is the right answer on what you should do. Uh, because, and this is part of the planning thing because you would say, okay, maybe, maybe it was a pricing issue. So let's offer her a 10% discount. Um, so the, the problem with setting up the action edits and, and even, you know, Facebook ads is if you're not watching this really closely, you're, you're kind of going to be bleeding money because what's going to happen is you're going to give the 10% discount to people that maybe we're just seeing if there's shipping involved, or maybe we're trying to figure out if, Hey, maybe I could get my boss to pay for this. Um, there's a lot of different factors that go into there that you just don't know about yet. Um, that's why everyone, including click funnels and, and anyone you're going to talk to is like, Hey, get their email address first. Now there is a, another option. And I don't know if this symbol will mean anything to you. And I don't even know if I drew it right, actually. But Facebook chat is uh, performing way, way better than emails. So what I would actually recommend at this point is you can get people to um, join on your chat box. And once they join on your chat bot and you send them a, a message that says, Hey, 
Um, we saw you abandon your cart. Did you need any help with that? They're actually going to respond to you like a human talking to a human instead of if you send an email and they just delete it or maybe they read it and they say, I'm going to get back to it later. Um, if you send them a chat message, you're more likely to get some feedback. And, you know, some people are going to find it creepy. And even even though I use this stuff, I, I find it a little creepy. But I also like it. Um, and I know it's there. So I might go somewhere and look at buying something. And then, you know, the, the chat will say, hey, you want to, you need help. And if I engage with that chat, now they'll ping me on Facebook when I leave and say, hey, did you remember us? Did you forget to sign up or did you do this or whatever? Um, so where am I going with this? Um, this is all part of a plan. Now I know we, I've taken you all over the place so far and I've kind of given you the sense of, Hey, we want a Facebook pixel to retarget people based on the page they've gone to. We will change the ad they'll see. Um, we want to, our ultimate goal is to get them to come to QuickBooks university and eventually spend some money. Um, and really, you know, an even bigger goal you might say is like, well, we want to get them inside of the university. So they're learning QuickBooks. And there's a lot of advantages to accomplishing that because the more people you have sign up, you know, not only you're making more money where you can advertise more, but you've got more people that are willing to, and more likely to talk about your product and spread the word. So from a functional planning standpoint, you know, we're, we're going to divide this up into pieces. And when I talk about, you know, Facebook advertising, we're thinking about the pixel and the separation of how we can divide people into different segments and, um, you know, maybe combine un non typically related things that are actually related. If that makes any sense to what I'm trying to say here. Um, and then when I talk about actionetics, that's going to be another, its own thing. And then when I talk about the Facebook chat, this is its own thing as well. Um, and then even email is its own thing. So one way to look at this is to say like, you know, actionetics can control the flow on your website and your emails. And then the Facebook pixel, um, depending on the bot setup and it's actually looking at hiring someone to build a Facebook chat bot. And there's actually some really good implementations of some cool stuff that I found um, while I was actually looking to hire someone. There's one called mobile monkey and I haven't tried it. I've only kind of checked it out and it looks pretty promising. I mean, I'm really impressed and I spelled it wrong here, put it in there. Um, anyways, it's, it's called mobile monkey and it is, let me actually see if I still got that open. I'll just open it. So I'm on the fence of, you know, just potentially purchasing this on a monthly basis uh, versus building something. I like the idea of building things because, you know, they, they can have their own, they can have their own uh, continued value. So, but basically, you know, you can embed the chat bot onto your website directly. And once you engage with this, 
it's going to link you up to Facebook and well, and that was uh, the wrong button to click. Let's do this. So you can see that you know, it's a completely free for personal use or the pro team starts at $49 a month. Now, actually, they have an agency price, which is uh, like $149. And so, I wonder what that asterisk is. I really like the idea of building my own, though, because, you know, let's say Facebook kind of drops off the face of the earth from the standpoint of, you know, like they've done with the pages where they've just, you know, as a business owner, they've totally ruined the pages because it's very hard to get engagement, which I'll show you how to, to get around that. Um, you know, they could do the same thing to chat. And if you build your own thing, then, then you could link it up to LinkedIn and whatnot. I'm kind of getting off topic here, but um, it's just good to know this exists right here. The QuickBooks, I mean the Mobile Monkey, and then I'm going to make that green. Um, okay, so if if we're thinking, you know, these are our components that we're working with. So I got off the path a little bit here, and we're going we're gonna to switch things up just a little bit. So... Ignore this section right now. We should come back to that. Um, what we're looking at is, yeah, you know, how can you how can you integrate all the the proper pieces and make it all work? So you've got like a Facebook piece, you've got a Actionetics piece, you've got a email and a chat, and then you've got QuickBooks University, and you have to kind of interconnect all these pieces. So we're going to say Facebook, say Actionetics, and email, and then chat. Well, I just realized this could totally be C, and then this is an E. So now we have a face. So let's make this C and this one email. C for chat. So we have face. Face is easy to remember. Facebook, Actionetics, chat, email. And this is actually the order we're going to try and tackle these things in, except for if you're not ready for chat, I'm not going to say you have to use that, but I would highly recommend it. So on Facebook, you're going to build a page. Now, I know you already have a page. You're going to get a business account. And I, I didn't, I think I saw you have that. So you, you have the right thing. Then you're going to set up your pixel. And you're going to put in all your actions. Now there's a new, kind of where I got off track a little bit, is there's a new method for doing the pixel. You used to have to manually type out your um, URL paths. And then make sure that you... You know, like if let's say it's cart, so it'd be like something like um, yourwebsite.com shop cart PHP or whatever, and you'd have to put in like the shop and the cart part, and then Facebook would figure out the rest. Now they've got this thing where you're going to hook it up to your phone and lay out your pixel that way. Uh, so that should be easier. You just have to do all the steps on your phone and add them as you go. I'm actually interested to try that out. I'll, I'll make a video when I do that because um, that's, that's going to be pretty cool. You'll take your pixel code 
and you'll put it into each step of your funnel. And so this is actually from the toy site I was telling you about. And so you go into settings and then track code and you'll put it in here. Now, what I was, where I got off into the tangent is I'm going to build out a good portion of my funnel and make sure it's working before I focus on the Facebook part, because I don't want to send traffic to a broken site, especially in including if maybe the site looks like it's functioning, but it's not collecting any data. Um, you're going to miss out on a lot. And so it's really important. Um, anyways, and, and you can see this is our unfinished funnel there. This is the other part to that, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, so the next part in our puzzle is actually the actionetics and I'll show you, I'll make another separate video on that. But you're, you're going to set up, if you want to call them buckets or containers of some, some sort, you're going to set up containers that will be based on the actual actions of your people that come to your site and the uh, score that Actionetics assigns to them. And so you'll have kind of, it will branch off from there. And with Actionetics, you're going to either put them in a funnel or into a email. And that's the both for, you know, both is the same for each, each section. And then you're going to divide your traffic here. Now, this is really important because you're going to have uh, hot traffic and warm traffic and cold traffic. So cold traffic is the hardest to convert. And, um, there are people that don't know what your product is and don't know they need it. Warm traffic is they maybe know they need a solution, but they don't know what your product is and how it's going to fit in. And then the hot traffic is those that like know what your product is, know that they need it and they want it. They want to buy. And you're going to treat each one of these sections uh, of, or these groupings of people differently. Um, of course, you're going to spend the most effort on your, your hot traffic to get them to purchase while they're still hot. And then you're going to try and, you know, turn up the heat on your warm traffic. And this is the easiest, most straightforward way to explain that. Um, to do that, we'll, and what I'm getting at here, so we'll, we'll have a step plan for each one of these. Like you, you've done most of these things were on the pixel part. And so I'll make a video about that. And then I don't know how far you are into the actionetics, but we'll make a video about, you know, let's set up actionetics. Let's start building out each bucket. And then, cause you're going to have like, let's say you have a hot traffic and they've taken specific actions. Um, so you're going to send them down one path versus hot traffic that clicks funnels is, is telling you has a low score because it indicates a low likelihood to actually buy. And so it's like, I think this is hot traffic, but if click funnels is actually saying, no, this is not hot traffic, then we want to send them down a different path to test that. And as you send your users down that path, if they turn into buyers, you know, ClickFunnels is going to adjust their, the way that view, it views that. So, uh, and then you've got your chat bot. So as long as you have a Facebook page and you choose a service and you link those up, then you're, your Facebook page is going to serve as, uh, you know, the, the chat connection to your customer and should be able to turn your cold traffic into warm traffic. And that's very important, um, because a lot of people that are cold are not likely to open emails. You know, they're, they're going to say no to those emails, 
people that are in the warm bucket, they will open those emails and you know, the hot definitely is opening the emails. So you want to move everyone, you know, basically cut, let's say up the ladder. Like you want to move them from cold to warm to then to hot. Um, and so the, the chat bot is to take care of that cold. Um, and so anyways, we'll set all that up and, and there'll be a, a video for that. And I'll try out the mobile monkey, make a video on it. And then the, the last thing and kind of the reason I made this last is not only can we say face with our acronym here, but email is, is kind of one of the more complicated ones. Um, because everyone wants to like plug out this series of emails and say, Hey, I've got it figured out. I've got my series of four or five emails, but the problem is you actually need way more than that. And what you're looking at. And the reason that, you know, this is important for planning is because you'll take your, your particular action people and they're hot and they'll get a certain email and then your warm action people will get a different email and your cold action people, they'll, they'll get less email. You're going to actually focus on them less through the email, um, and more through chat or, or trying to get them to come back to your site somehow. And the reason I love chat so much is because the open rates for, you know, chat engagement is really super high. So anyways, on your email, you know, let's call this our, our hot traffic email. And this is what is kind of funny to me. This is usually people are like, Hey, I have this great email plan. That's working so awesome. And really what they have is they've been sending the same email to everybody and their hot traffic is responding. So they're, they're on fire for it already. And they respond, um, they would actually do a lot better if they had another one that qualified for this. Um, well, let's not use blue. Let's use this funky color here for this warm. So you've got this, this warm bunch and you send them a different email chain. And so the difference is when you have a hot bunch, maybe you're, you're trying to come over, overcome an objection. You might be like saying, let's overcome a price objection. Let's overcome a logistics objection. Let's overcome some sort of an objection that they have that didn't let them purchase the day they came. For whatever reason, they didn't buy. But when you have a warm traffic, you might, you're either going to be in the point where you're still trying to open their eyes to what your product, product even is or why it fits into their life. So they might be, let's say that's, a, you know, warm, warm traffic is that secretary and she's like, yeah, I work with QuickBooks all day, every day. But why in the world would I want to um, use it in the evening and learn it better? And so what you might do is have a series of stories. And th this, I think, is probably the most effective way for warm traffic. Because with hot traffic, you can talk directly to them and say, hey, you know, this is a great deal for you. It's going to save you time and money. Here's a, you know, here's a sample to get you started. You know, that kind of thing. But with the warm traffic, you, you want to turn up the heat. And the way you could do that is to tell stories. So you might start with a story about, hey, this is Betty. She would, and, you know, we're talking to Betty, but this is Betty. And she is a secretary just like you. And she was stuck in her job and didn't know where to go next and was just going in every day to get the job done. And then she joined QuickBooks University. And you won't believe what happened next because Betty was able to get a raise from her boss 
And then once she got that raise, she actually got another job offer. And when she got that other job offer, she was so excited. She told her boss she got another raise and everybody's happy. Betty likes her job better or whatever, something like that. And then you might tell another story about, um, and and you might actually, it'd be better probably to divide these up. So you tell a story about someone who got a raise, someone who made a job change, and then, you know, someone else that maybe made a, a career change. Maybe they were a secretary and then they became a manager because they learned um, QuickBooks. So your, your different stories are going to turn that warm traffic into hot traffic. Because when, once they, they get it and they've got that aha moment where they're like, oh, it makes sense. All of a sudden, they're warm traffic. They're ready to buy. And, and you'll tell because when they switch over, they're, they're going to do a couple different things that you'll be able to see, um, which this is where you know, ClickFunnels is really beautiful because you're, if you're sending your emails through the, the ClickFunnels platform and then all of a sudden they're opening every email and they're clicking on every link or they're responding to your emails, then you know there's been a shift and something has connected with them. And that's kind of the name of the game. You want to connect with them. And then, you know, going back to the, the cold traffic, you know, with a chat bot, a chatbot is perfect for cold traffic because it can ask them engaging questions. And then when it gets an answer or to a point in the chat where it, it can't really move forward, um, and I'm, I'm going to show you this when I build the video, it, it can say something like, Hey, I'm going to ask someone that knows, like I'm a secretary. I'm going to ask someone, I'm going to text my boss, whatever. And then it gives them, it gives them an opportunity to switch to a human really easily. Um, or you could just be kind of upfront with, you know, Hey, this is a chat bot and I'm kind of limited in my abilities, but I really like the, the ones that I've seen that seem the most effective are the ones that are like kind of taking it to that next level. So they, they take you down a path of finding out as much as they can and then trying to help you. Um, but they don't do it in a robotic way. And so like a, a, an example I'll use to, to describe that is if I came to the site and it said, are you a business owner or an employee? And it had two options there and I click on one and then it says, are you looking to improve your QuickBooks? And I say, no, I mean, this kind of ends the conversation. So, but if you're asking, and that's what most of the chat bots are going to be like, and that's, that's why I'm on the fence about this mobile monkey, but definitely going to try it. Um, because I want one that's going to be like, Hey, uh, we're QuickBooks university. We provide online training for QuickBooks and it's going to make you save money. Um, are you having trouble with your QuickBooks? Uh, and that's probably not actually the best question. So let's see what do you think about this. I actually come back to this when I do the chat video. Cause I need to think about it more. Um, but I know that there are good ways and I've seen really good examples on how to convert that cold traffic to warm. And the nice thing about using chat is, you know, let's, let's say you were actually, you know, chat bot versus chat. Let's say you were actually chatting with every person that came by. I mean, you'd waste an enormous amount of time to try and figure out who's actually a good fit. Um, and, it, and it's even, even with the emails, I mean, you can send out a hundred emails to the cold traffic person that's, you know, still cold and they're not even going to open them or see them. So you, I feel like you waste a lot of time, uh, to do that. And, and the reason that we even focus on cold traffic at all is because, you know, such a big piece of that 
traffic you'll have is cold traffic but because of the way facebook is is doing chats right now you can send someone a link from your website to i'm sorry from the chat to your website and you're not going to get penalized from facebook for that and then you're going to get a really high click through rate if it's got an enticing title or it's something that they're actually interested in so if you send out a uh, a link that said, and actually, let me see if I have this available. So if you, so these are the top headlines for uh, business to business. And so you might send out a link that says the three ways to enter a bill in QuickBooks or um, the most important thing you need to know about QuickBooks. Um, and actually here's a good fit that kind of leads back into that. So it's uh, let's say 10 things you need to know about QuickBooks and so on and so forth, but they're going to be like, Oh, that, that applies to me. I need to click on this link now with your pixel and the action edits, because you're, you're sending this link out and you can tailor your links. So you could say, okay, I'm going to create a landing page just for the messenger chat. And I'm going to send out this link for that landing page. And on that landing page, if they land there, I'm going to put them in an action edits bucket that says something specific. And I don't know, I mean, that's where the, the mobile monkey thing is going to get interesting. Cause if you can segment your customers on your mobile monkey, then it gives us a lot of things to work with. So, um, yeah, that that's kind of it for now. Um, I've got to edit the video I've made so far and that's probably going to take me a while because I stopped a lot to think about some of these things and how I was going to say them. Um, and then also I'm going to cut out some portions which were kind of tangential. So uh, I hope this is helpful. I uh, would really appreciate some feedback on um, if you found it helpful in uh, any questions you have. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.